Welcome back and joining us on the show now is Peter McQuire. He's CEO of Exim Australia. And Peter, welcome. So much happening in crude oil. We saw 4% gains yesterday after 3% of a jump up on Monday. So after that 10% decline in the previous week, this week seems to be really gaining back all those losses. And $80 is back. How do you look at these current prices and where do you see the support coming from? You know, I think there's just so much data to drop over the next matter of, well, hours and if not a couple of days for, open, for crew to take a real steady look at where things are. Yes, I agree with what your synopsis is. What you have seen in the last couple of days has been very bullish. And I want to see, I just saw that uh, Britain's just, or UK's just announced its inflation and it's a pullback. So that's a good sign. And the other side of it is uh, we might be in a little bit more upward momentum. So we did say it's going to be choppy, and uh, choppy it is. So maybe it's a few dollars higher next week from where we are today. Mm. Peter, most of the banks and brokerages seem to be talking about $100 per barrel as an average coming back in 2023 and perhaps yeah. 24 as well because the investments may have peaked out. Demand, not so much. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, look, as far as demand's going, Manisha, we're going to be close on that 100 million barrels a day. You know, that's the storyline as far as the headline number. And you've got China opening up now. You've got, uh, let's say, a, a different philosophy in Hong Kong and across Asia with uh, the COVID lockdown. So I would say that that should give us more consumption. And the next part of it, of course, is with that US dollar's coming back, it's at 104 now, and I think there's even more pain ahead for US dollar to the downside. So I wouldn't be surprised that'll lift up crude as well. Okay. Peter, when you look at this year, the range has been, uh, you know, almost 70 on the lower side to 139 on the higher side, and that is clearly a $40, $80 of a, ra uh, $80 of a range that we've seen. Yeah. What kind of a yeah. range are you anticipating for the next year now? Oh, Manisha, I... I but from a, if I'll put on two hats, the first hat is a trader. I hope it's as volatile next year as it is this year because it's just been outstanding trade crude and oil energy. But let's, but I'll take that hat off now. I think it's going to be a tighter bandwidth, and I think you're going to be looking around that. You know where it is at the moment could be the low side, up to that 100 to 105, sort of 110. If we don't see any dramatic impacts as far as geopolitical supply concerns. And what happens, I want to keep an eye on dollar, Nisha, because I think that's going to be a really wild trade next year, US dollar. Mm. And what range are you looking at for the dollar index then? Or it's been only a couple of weeks ago we were talking, well, maybe more than that, eight weeks ago it was 114. So I think it, I won't be surprised to take a 102 handle out. I'm interested to see what Fed Chair Powell has to say. I, there's no doubt. I mean, it's got to be 50 basis points. And... I think that that's going to be a softness that, that for the dollar. Lagarde will come out as far as Eurozone and they'll punch that one higher. So, yeah, I, I won't be surprised to see the dollar index take more pressure to the downside. Mm. So even as you said, 102 is a possibility there. What's the highest side that you see here? Well, if you're over next year, if, I mean, you've been talking for the whole of the year, I won't, I won't be surprised to take back out the 110 because I think there's going to be a lot of currency wars at play. I'm not sure what's happening as far as Japan. The pound seems to be very strong now compared to what it was two months ago or three months ago. Mm. And the euro seems to be choppy. So I've got to see how aggressive Lagarde's going to be with the ECB. You've got some inflation stories on three of those members members of the European Union are above 20% inflation. So I think they've got a harder job ahead of themselves, Eurozone, than what the US does. You know, Peter, well, uh, as you rightly put, much of the price moves that we've seen happen in last three or four months clearly have been macro. Maybe the 60-65% of a move in a commodity was macro. But when you look at the fundamentals as well, uh, whether it's about Russia, Ukraine, the Keystone Pipeline, that seems to be adding a lot of su uh, support right now, or the Chinese demand... What is it that you will watch out for going forward, apart from macros, when it comes to fundamentals on ground? Well, I can't get away from um, Professor Larry Summers, emeritus professor at Harvard. And he, when he said that, he made a mistake. They, well, they made a mistake when they cancelled mm -hmm. the Keystone, made a mistake slowing down, uh, was just all of those key points and all kinds of permitting activity. They've really handbraked the crude industry in the US. So... I've got to keep an eye on that. I've got to see whether Biden wants to turn around any of those, uh, d well, those, those policies. 
And I'm curious to see what consumption is going to be out of China, Manisha, because this is a game changer. If this is open, then I think it's all game on as far as consumption for uh, Chinese crude.